What's up guys, I'm super excited to have you inside of my free course. What I wanna tell you guys, I promise you, if you guys take notes, follow along, and implement this process into your business, you will generate more leads and sales online. So I'm not gonna waste any more of your guys' time, and we're gonna dive in. What's up guys, welcome to this free course, the intro to online marketing. So basically there's a bunch of stuff we're gonna be going over today, I'm super excited. Hope you guys got your notepads out because we have a lot of stuff that we are going to go over. So first off, what is online marketing? It is brand awareness, spreading a message, search engine optimization, but most importantly, in my opinion, it's getting more sales online. It's generating more leads online. All in all, it's making more money online. That is what online marketing is for. That is what online marketing is about. It's all about making you more money or making other businesses money if you are an online marketer. So that is my definition of online marketing. So how do you do online marketing? So basically, there are seven steps that I recommend that you do when you do online marketing. First, you have to have a killer website. The next thing you have to have is a website with great messaging. You have to have your social media channels built out. You need to have your paid ads running. You need to have an email drip sequence in place. You need to be creating content. And all in all, after all said and done, you have to rinse and repeat. So it, those are the seven steps to online marketing. So starting off creating a website. There's nine things that make a good website. So first off, I recommend finding a theme that works. Two, use great web hosting. Pay for good web hosting. Make sure your website is mobile optimized. Four, create a simple look and feel. Five, track everything. Six, make sure it is optimized properly as well. Redirect all your forms to thank you pages. Eight, link all of your forms to the CRM. And nine is all of the simple things. So let's dive into these nine things. So finding a theme that works. So there's no reason you guys need to custom code. That's why I say find a theme. The reason why you don't need to custom code is because there's tons of themes out there. There's tons of sites out there that are worked and built off of themes and they're template based and they look great and they convert. So I recommend you don't need to custom code. A lot of time custom code also requires a full-time employee and your full-time employee is gonna be constantly making changes to your website just to make sure it's up and running and working. So your website is super expensive and it's not affordable. So I recommend WordPress. So 90% of current websites on the web are WordPress, and if you don't want to use WordPress and you're an e-commerce business, I recommend Shopify. So the thing is WordPress, it's the platform itself is free, but you might have to pay for a theme. So I use a theme called Divi, and other themes out there I possibly will recommend is Thrive Themes. But you have to spend money on a theme, if you are going to use WordPress. So the reason why is you get what you pay for. I promise you guys, if you purchase a theme, you will likely find a theme that you want your website to actually function and look like. So everything will already be ready to rock and roll. So I recommend spending money on a theme and making sure that theme is constantly being updated and works properly. The Divi theme that I use, I'm not paid to say this, but you have tons of building blocks that you can use and it works perfectly. So I haven't had a problem with it and I've been using it for the last five years. So use the best web host service. The reason why I bring this up, hosting is where your website is stored. So for you new guys out there, basically hosting is a place where you store your website on a server and you have to actually pay for this. So cheap hosting gets hacked and causes tons of problems. I recommend WP Engine. WP Engine is great. It's from, I haven't had a problem with it. 
Um, a lot of times when you pay for good hosting as well, you're going to get faster website speeds. So if your website is loading faster, then what happens is you're more likely to convert. So imagine if you had your phone out and you're sitting there trying to get on a website and because it's not loading fast enough, it is not loading fast enough, you're likely going to leave. So make sure you have good web hosting. Promise it's important. A lot of times your website will actually be backed up every 24 hours if you have good web hosting. They'll constantly be backing up your site and so it's never going to crash and if it does, it's gonna be backed up all the time. It's also gonna have great customer support. So a lot of times if you need have problems with your web host or have questions, a lot of times the host is there and it's actually, they're going to help you get through this process. So use a good web host and you're gonna get great customer support. So if you really do the math too, a cheap web host versus a more expensive, all in all, a lot of times the cheap web host has a lot of upsells. So the great web host is really not gonna be that much more. So good web hosts, a lot of times are gonna include an SSL certificate. They're gonna include other things like that. And a lot of times they have upsells on the cheap web host and by the end, maybe the good web host is only five to $10 more a month. So recommend just going with the good stuff right out the gate. A lot of times the good web host is just less likely to crash as well. So go out there and get good web hosting for you or your clients. So creating a simple look and feel. So what do I mean by creating a simple look and feel? So keep button colors all the same, only use two to three fonts in your headlines, your body text, your menus. Keep font sizes consistent across the board. So your H1 tags are that size, the H2 tags are that size. Don't go in and have a bunch of different sizes of fonts all over the place. It looks cluttery and not professional. Have a color palette with three to five colors, black, gray, white, and obviously your brand colors. So most brand colors that I've seen only have two. So that's a total of five. So three to five colors on your website. Next thing we're gonna talk about is tracking everything. So what do I mean by this? Make sure you have Google Analytics in place. Make sure you have Google Webmaster Tools in place. Make sure you have the Facebook Pixel in place. Make sure you have Google Paid Ads in place and other paid channels if you're running paid channels such as Yahoo, Bing, different things like that. So make sure you have all of those pixels in place so you can track where your conversions are coming from and how they are coming in to your website. Site optimization. So what do I mean by site optimization? A lot of times sites don't load fast enough because they have the wrong image sizes. So make sure your image sizes are sized properly. I recommend anywhere from 50 KB to 70 KB, and I found those load the fastest. Don't use sliders on your website. They slow down your website. That falls in the place of making sure your website is mobile friendly. Your site needs to load in four seconds. So you can see all these things from these amazing tools that I have for tools for optimization on Google Site Speed and Google Analytics. These are free tools that you can use that's basically going to tell you how fast your website's loading, how fast pages are loading, and everything for a site optimization. Redirecting all of your forms. So what do I mean by this? Anytime someone comes in and fills out a form on your website, they need, after they fill out the form, it needs to redirect to a thank you page. So redirecting it to a thank you page and on the thank you page, it has the information that they need. So if it's a consultation, maybe it says, I'm calling you in five minutes to follow up. If it is a guide or something like that, then they fill out the form, they have a button over there that they can immediately get the guide. <clears throat> all the things, all the opt-in forms that they have out there, they need to redirect 
to thank you pages. All of your forms need to link to some sort of CRM. So a CRM, Active Campaign, Infusionsoft, MailChimp, there's a bunch of different CRMs out there. But what happens after they fill out that form? Immediately, they're going to be getting an email saying, thanks for downloading. Here also is the download that you want, or we got your request, whatever the information is, but you need to be collecting that information. The information you need to collect, name, email, phone, is what I usually go out and collect. So if you have that information as well, it's now gonna give you the ability to send them emails, send them texts, and call them is needed. So the no-brainer things on your website, what I mean by these is I can't tell you how many websites I've gone to, looked for information, could not find it, and it was the most simple information I was looking for. Email, phone number, and address. Make sure these are super easy and visible on your website so people can find the information. Email, phone number, and of course the address. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is site messaging. So I call it the USP, you've heard this before, the unique selling proposition. Your site needs to pass the five second test and social proof slash reviews. That's what we're gonna go over next. So the USP is the unique selling proposition, something you are going to give them in exchange for their information. So examples of USPs, you have guides, video series, consultations, audits, webinars, trainings, you have all these free things you're gonna give them in exchange for their information. So making sure you have a unique selling proposition on your website is so important to collect leads for your business. So you figure out what you need to offer your people, but like I said, guides, videos, consultations, audits, and you can see them there. The five second test. The five second test is when they come to your website, they immediately need to know what your business is about. So to give you an example, if we're talking about a carpet cleaner, maybe he's going to, the first headline on his website is the best carpet cleaning company in California. Clever phrases aren't always the answer guys. So sometimes you just have to say what it is. And then after that, you have to follow it up with your USP. So basically, best plumber in California, followed up by a USP such as, download our five-step guide on how to solve any leaks inside of your bathroom. Download your guide now. That is basically how the layout of your website needs to go. Right up front, tell them what, tell them what you are, and then show them how you can help them. Social proof. So basically social proof is companies that you've worked for with logos. So you have to show them somehow, display somehow companies you've worked with and display their logos. You can show them written reviews of your products. You can show them video reviews of your products. And I always recommend four to six reviews on a page. So the more reviews, not always the answer, but the quality ones is the answer. So pick the best reviews and put them on your page. Now we're gonna talk about social channels. So we have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Google listings. So Facebook, basically the role with Facebook is create a page for your business, have all your business information on the page services, times, hours, phone numbers, post on a regular basis, create a group about your business where you can actually continue to have conversations. Instagram, create an Instagram page, have all your business information on the page, services, times, hours, phone numbers, post on a regular basis, and create stories on a regular basis as well. YouTube, Create a YouTube page, have all of your business information on that page. Services, times, hours, phone numbers. Create a content schedule around your YouTube channel. Link your YouTube to AdWords and analytics and rank those videos for the keywords that you're going after. That's how you best can leverage YouTube. Google listing. So create a Google listing page 
Have all your business information on your page. Services, service areas, times, hours, phone numbers, post on this listing regularly. So going back to this, I can't tell you guys how many businesses I've worked with that don't even have control over their Google listing. So make sure you guys have control of this Google listing and make sure all those social channels are in place. Diving into paid advertising. So we're gonna go over Facebook paid ads, Google paid ads. So Facebook paid ads in basically all in all is Facebook itself and then you have Instagram. Then you have Google paid ads, they have different areas, search network, call only ads, display ads, YouTube ads, Gmail ads, and Google shopping ads. Facebook paid ads. Here are some tips that need to happen and things you need to know about your Facebook ads when you're running them. First off, you need to install the Facebook pixel on your website. It's got to be there. It's got to be in the header on every single page across the board. Next, you actually need to create audiences of people visiting your website. You need to create conversions. So basically those thank you pages are going to be your conversion pages. You need to create ads. Now analyzing some of the data from your ads, your ads need to have a 1.5% click-through rate or higher. They need to be converting at three to 10% and your relevant scores need to be a seven plus. If your click-through rate's too low, you're not converting, and your relevant score is too low, you need to go back to the drawing board and create new Facebook ads. Facebook placements. So basically, these are places you can run different ads. You have feeds, instant articles, in-stream videos, write columns, suggested videos, marketplace stories, and messenger. You do have a thing called the audience network. I did not put it here because I don't recommend running your ads there. You have Instagram placements, feeds, and stories. So one of the big things you guys have to realize on a smaller budget per se, you have to give your campaigns, campaigns time. So I recommend don't touch your ads for three to five days. It doesn't matter how much money you're spending. Don't touch them for three to five days. Don't go in there, turn them on, turn them off, turn them on, turn them off. You're going to be wasting a ton of time and not giving the algorithm time to actually do what it needs to do. Usually on day 14 with a smaller budget, especially if you're starting to run campaigns for the first time, 14 days you possibly need to go in, change copy, and see what's going on with your copy. Day 30, you possibly might need to change your targeting. And then you have to realize that with your offers, you might need to wait three to six months uh, and give you these campaigns time. It goes back to how much you're spending as well. But if you're spending smaller budgets, a lot of times you're gonna have to give it more time so you can get more data to make more assumptions on what's going on with your campaigns. Google paid ads. So we're gonna be talking about the search network. Do your keyword research. So what I mean by this is figure out what keywords are gonna work for your business and what keywords are going to turn people searching on Google into paid clients or customers. One of the big things I found with Google paid ads is you need to use exact match keywords. So using exact match keywords is one of the keys to success with Google paid ads. Use phrase match keywords possibly too. Um, this is another set of keywords you can use on Google paid ads. It's a key as well to using those to, to getting your ads converting. Use all the call outs. So using all the call outs on Google paid ads is gonna help you as well. Um, convert people better from the search network. Use all the extensions. I always recommend having five ads in your ad sets. So make sure you have five ads inside that ad set running at all times, at least five ads. On Google paid ads, if you've done your keyword research, and you're using the right keywords, right types of keywords, such as exact or phrase match, your click-through rate needs to be 
around 6% or higher, I would say. So 6% or higher on your click-through rate and make sure your quality score is above a six. Now, if you're getting in bidding wars, bidding wars with other people, you're gonna be dealing with higher and lower quality scores. So Google paid ads call only, same sets of rules for the call only for search campaigns. Do your keyword research, use exact match keywords, use phrase match keywords, use all the call outs, use all the extensions, five ads in your ad sets and make sure again, your click through rate is around 6%. Uh, display ads. These are a touchy subject, but display ads. I recommend if you're ever going to run display ads that you only use display ads for remarketing purposes only. Remarketing purposes only. Know that. Uh, do your audience research if you are going to go dive into not doing it for remarketing. But I, again, I recommend just mainly using display ads for remarketing only five ads in your ad set and your click through rate is going to be lower here. So I recommend a 1.5% click through rate on display ads. If you ask me guys, you get your search going first, you get your call going first, you're going to get your YouTube ads going first, and then you're going to dive into display. So now we're going to talk about YouTube. So do your audience research on YouTube. Um, this also goes back to doing keyword research as well for YouTube. Again, five ads in your ad set, 6% click-through rate. And I always shoot for around a $10 conversion. Obviously, there's a lot of factors that we're talking about going for a $10 conversion on YouTube. It's going to depend on how much your product is. It's also going to depend on a lot of other things. But I generally, generally speaking, I shoot for around a $10 conversion from YouTube. Google paid ads, going back to a lot of the same rules, keyword research, exact match keywords, phrase match keywords, using all your call outs, extensions, all that stuff, and a 6% click through rate. So now we're going to talk about email shifting here. So create a drip sequence, six to 10 emails. A lot of times people aren't fun and engaging. They are not consistent always link to your site and keep them simple. So going back here to email again, creating a drip sequence, six to 10 emails for each offer that you are doing. So every offer you have, you need to have a six to 10 email sequence, be fun and engaging. What I mean by this is don't be boring. A lot of times people are super boring in their emails and they're like, please buy my product. That's super boring, it's not fun, it's not engaging, and it doesn't work. Being consistent. What I mean by this is emailing these people on a weekly basis after their drip sequence happens. Continue to keep in contact with them. Let them know about what's going on in your business, things that are going on. Always link to your website somehow in your email sequence, whether it's giving them something else. And again, guys, keep them simple. People don't want to read Bible stories when they open up their email. So keep it short, keep it to the point, and somehow give them value. Content creation. So we're going to go over a couple things with content creation, some ideas, and figuring out the easiest way for you guys to create content. So some of the content ideas that you guys can have that I'll give you is create content around common questions people ask you. So if people are always asking you these different questions, create content around that. Talk about current events that are going on in your business. Talk about current problems you're facing in your business. Create a top 10 list of things you love about something people should know. Share notes you took on someone's presentation like this one or even one of your own. Give tips on speeding up a workflow in your industry. So maybe you're a video editor and you want to talk about how you can speed up your workflow in video. Interview people in your field. Uh, so maybe create a podcast or something like that. Share tools that make your job that much easier. So maybe you guys have this cool new tool that's helping you guys become that much better. 
myths and facts that are going on in your business and in your industry, something that you can always create content around as well. So now we're going to talk about creating the easiest way to create content. So everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. So obviously you have different ways to create content. So you have video, writing, podcasts, slide shares. Slide shares like a presentation like this. You could write a book. You create guides. You could create checklists. There is a million different ways that you can create content for your business. So I recommend that you find the easiest way for you and you tackle that and go after it like crazy. So for me personally, podcasts and video have been the easiest things for me to create content and one of the fastest ways that I can create content for my business. So find out which way works best for you. Next thing we're going to talk about is search engine optimization, SEO. Huge debate here. Some people say it's dying. Some people say it's never going to die. It's a huge debate, but I believe you should be doing it as well with all this other stuff. So find keywords you want to rank for. So giving you an example of a plumber. So he wants to he wants to pop up when someone searches plumber near me. So what he needs to be doing is finding keywords that he thinks people are going to be Googling in his business. So find those keywords. You need to have keyword combinations. So when you're creating a blog or creating a video, you need to be saying those keyword combinations in that blog in a very natural way. So a combination for a plumber near me, a a combination might be plumber in Utah. So having different combinations of keywords throughout the blog post is essential. Keyword in the URL. So basically it's www.thebusinessname.com backslash and making sure that URL has the keyword. So plumber near me would be inside of that URL. Blog post length needs to be 1500 words plus and the content on your post, you need to have as much content on that post as possible. So whether it's an image, whether it's a video, a podcast, the more stuff you have like that, the higher you are going to rank. So for a little tip for you video podcasters like me out there, basically what you can do is you can take a video and you can go get it transcribed and that's going to give you around 1500 words pretty dang quick if you're just shooting a video of you talking about your business so you can go in there add the keywords when needed make it sound good and that's a little tip for you guys for seo so the last thing you guys need to do is what i call rinse and repeat and now what does that mean it means create more ads create different offers, change out your email sequences when need be, make site adjustments, basically go back through that entire process that we just did and continue to optimize it and get higher conversion rates. So I always recommend a website to be converting around four to six percent. Anytime someone comes to that site, four to per- four to six percent of the time they need to be turning into your business. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And if you guys need to learn how to implement this entire process into your business, just hit the button below and check out my next course. There's two things that you need to know about the next course. Number one, it is a 30 day money back guarantee. If you guys don't like it, I will give you your money back, zero questions asked. And the second and final thing, You need to know this is literally all my years of knowledge from start to finish, the entire process of what I do with online marketing. If you guys have any questions about this course, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you there.